All right, guys, this has been something I wanted to do for a long, long time. Uh, in this video, we're, we're going to be going over my 2024 habitat plan for my property. The way I want to set up this video is it's going to be more like a lecture where I'm going to have the camera facing my iPad and then I'm going to be talking over as we go through the different layers of uh, drawings that I did for my property. So um, it's going to be probably a little bit long, a lot of rambling, a lot of uh, figuring things out as we go. So. Uh, stick along and hopefully you'll learn something or if you have something to uh, teach me that you know about habitat please leave it in the comments all right guys let's just jump right into this now uh, to do this i have my ipad and i use onyx to take a screen uh, shot of the property lines so i could have a better idea of what's going on i also use onyx feature of the radius tool so you'll see um, this red uh, x here with the big red uh, circle around it would be the 150 yard um, rule to hunt around a house. So you have to be 150 yards from a house and uh, 25 yards from a road. So uh, this red X here is where I eventually plan on having my house and over here is my sister's house. So you get to get an idea of what's going on. This black outer line would be the outer property line between my property and our neighbors. So I just wanted to start this video off with a plain slate and uh, that way you could see where my uh, thought processes uh, started out. So if you're doing this to your property, you could sort of follow along uh, what I did. So right off the bat, I fixed some of the water um, issues. So uh, all satellite maps aren't perfect. So this creek over here is actually this creek right here. So I fixed that and uh, included this creek, or included this waterway right here, which, which is actually runoff drainage from the farm. So there's a diversion ditch right here that diverts the water into the creek uh, over here. So right off the bat, I fixed all the water uh, travel corridor paths. After that, I had an idea of where I wanted food plots. So let me throw those in real quick. So I have the idea of where the food plots were. So these green areas here are where I wanna have food plots down the road. And you'll see uh, better reasoning why I decided to do that. So um, knowing that I wanted those food plots there, I started throwing in this orange color here, which would be um, an area where I want to create an edge or cover away from the house eventually and to make the deer and uh, animals feel more comfortable. So orange is uh, edge, think um, switchgrass, uh, red osier dogwood, um, maybe planting apple trees, uh, just creating that break uh, from the field edge um, into the food plots. Um, so after that, I know that eventually I want to throw a pond in. So let's just throw in a pond down the road. Um, this pond, I want to be uh, take some of the water from the farm over here and try and uh, stop some of that sediment. So if I could uh, take the water that's running off from the fields that have manure and stuff like that and uh, have it flow into the pond there and use different sustainable uh, techniques to help clean that water before it enters the stream. That's sort of one of the goals of this pond, uh, as well as aesthetics and creating more habitat for different animals. And that was the goal of the islands here is to uh, create uh, islands are really good for um, birds that are uh, susceptible to different types of predators. So having an island is ideal for those birds like loons that need to be protected and stay on the water and stuff like that. Um, so not only for aesthetic reasons, but also for habitat improvement reasons. So I threw this pond in here thinking about uh, trying to um, clean the water before it enters the creek uh, in aesthetic reasons. So we have this pond here that hopefully will happen down the road someday, who knows. Um, also, we have to think about this area here. This area here is swamp, and according to the USDA Forest Service, if you go on uh, their website, you could find different maps and stuff like that. This area here is designated 
like a wild uh, wetland. So um, all kinds of different permits and stuff like that. It's not touchable, you know, and I don't want to touch it. It's a ideal habitat for different animals. Uh, for example, on this section here, we got some beavers over here, beavers over here, uh, chopping down, um, changing uh, the habitat, which I love. Uh, a lot of people probably would hate that the beavers are cutting down trees, but I love seeing wildlife like that flourish. Um, there's uh, di all kinds of different uh, ways that this water flows through, through the swamp, so it's really neat and a really cool habitat for uh, different animals. So um, can't touch the swamp, which is fine. Don't want to. Um, but all of this area here is according to the USDA as well as we've been farming this area for several generations is tillable uh, farmland. So uh, we can... Um, plant all these different food plots as well as edge material uh, which in return is going to basically we're reclaiming this field here there was a field here and uh, i'm trying to reclaim that and give that back to the wildlife so um if anybody has more information on different types of plants that we could uh, plant there to help improve the habitat uh, that would be great but the basic goal is to uh, try and create more habitat off from that swamp so now that we hit on that let's throw in our food plot terms here so we got food plot food plot um, so after I started doing a lot of the bottom here I wanted to jump up onto the hill here so uh, going from a relatively flat area down here sorry a relatively flat area down here moving into the mountainside here it's a uh, relatively steep not too crazy but there are several benches uh, that run along the mountainside that create sort of flatter areas so you'll see that coming forward so after that I knew that um, that the first hundred or so yards are usually uh, dough bedding and then after that you'll have 200 300 yards you'll, you'll have buck bedding so I uh, threw those terms in here so the light green is uh, going to be dough bedding um, potentially and the dark green is going to be buck bedding so the goal of the light green area here is uh, well I guess both areas would be that I want to uh, start thinning those areas they're pretty thick um, monoculture there's a lot of ash that's now dead so I want to cut down a lot of the dead ash and start clearing out that canopy to allow more light down into these areas now I want to increase uh, stem count as well as um, cover and all of the benefits that go along with uh, thinning a monoculture forest area so the goal of the light green would be to do a more heavy um, clearing in this area not clearing thinning uh, I don't want to clear the trees I but I definitely want to thin out that area to allow more sunlight down and then the dark green the goal up there would be to do uh, some uh, selective thinning as well as uh, creating more uh, edge habitat around that area so the animals feel more um, uh, protected in that area so they feel like they want to bed um, the light blue area that I have here are different uh, logging trails that were there previously as well as side by side or dirt bike or ATV trails. So um, those light blue areas could be used for access. I could plant switchgrass along those areas to help uh, sneak in and out of these areas. Unfortunately, we'd be sneaking in and out from the north, which uh, predominantly in the rifle season, the wind is blowing from this direction. So um, hunting this area is definitely going to be a difficult one. In early archery season, the wind's coming from the south, so uh, I sh early archery season is going to be ideal for hunting in this area to try and uh, get in and out without them uh, scenting me. So uh, it's definitely an interesting um, piece of land to hunt, but basically the goal is just to improve the habitat right now. Uh, this purple area here, we have uh, oak trees. So we have uh, acorn flat up here, uh, which is going to be ideal for trying to hunt around that. Um, 
let's see. So I threw that acorn in and then I jumped back down here real quick in my thought process. Event, I really started getting into hunting uh, waterfowl. So one thing that I've thought about doing is if we could put a uh, pipe out of this pond and have a valve, we could flood this area um, when it's a uh, duck hunting season, you know, potentially we could put um, corn in that area and then flood it and it'd be a great area for hunting waterfowl and stuff like that. So that was just something I thought up real quick. And then next I threw in some more deer food plots. So let's throw in those terms here. All right. This area up here, oh, sorry is my sister's property and there's a nice flat on the top there so if she could allow me to throw a food plot up there i think it'd be a great area to have a sanctuary food plot where we don't hunt it ever it's purely there for um, the animals to have and feel comfortable to eat food and then if they decide that they want to move down into here then we hunt them down there so if we could throw a sanctuary food plot there that would be great there's a nice flat up there that I want to uh, clear out and put a food plot and potentially put a uh, water hole there, whether the water can sustain itself or whether I have to fill it up with the side by side. But I think since there's no water up there, if the bucks could move across this mountainside and have a water source to stop at, I think it could be a great uh, kill plot. So I guess I should have put a kill plot instead of food plot there. So that's sort of the idea there. And then I threw in this little area here. This is where old stone quarry is. And uh, I could potentially put a food plot there or something that's pretty flat, but I think it's just gonna be an area that I just sort of leave for now and figure out what to do down the road. And then lastly, I have just trees where I plan it planned on planting trees. So if this is where I plan on having my house someday. I really wanted to plant trees along this uh, 150 yard uh, no hunting zone area to create a buffer between the food plots um, so the deer feel more comfortable going in there. So I just sort of went around and you know thought of good areas to put on uh, different trees potentially you know different oaks or apple trees stuff like that or just trees for aesthetic reasons so that's sort of what I have going on here um, from the after getting this all done I think the main purpose of this was to create a overview of what's going on once you can look at it from above you get the better idea of like a more wholesome plan of what's going on um, and you could see how doing one thing at a time and then adding those on and on and on really could create a you know a really awesome plan and a lot of people can do this i think um people underestimate underestimate themselves um if you get um parchment paper and you print this stuff out obviously not everybody has an ipad or different programs that they could uh you know draw nicely but it's as simple as um pulling out a uh graph and using uh protractors and rulers and markers and crayons or whatever you want and uh, use the resources that you have and layer it up with parchment paper every layer that I did here you could use a different layer of parchment paper and it just helps you get a better idea of what's going on um, use your knowledge of uh, what you have of when the animals move and stuff like that to help make better decisions but um, this is what I've been up to um, I'm going to switch back over to the camera right now so we could finish off this video. All right, there you have it. Um, I think that was really fun. I hope you guys get a lot of uh, enjoyment out of that video. Uh, lately, I've been driving around with a uh, book in the side-by-side -side with my daughter and my wife, and we'd identify different trees in this area and uh, really get an idea of what's going on. And the goal of that, um, this master plan, is just to have a more uh, cohesive idea of what's going on that way um, all my thoughts are on the same page and i could look at it and be like oh okay you know this is an area that i'm lacking information or uh, what type of vegetation that i want to plant there so i could start breaking these food plots into i know that there's going to be a food plot here and here so then i could be like okay i want this uh to be a winter food plot and this to be a spring 
fall or a mixture or maybe I plant uh, soybeans and corn. Um, but by breaking it down into these different layers, then you could start picking layers and hitting those layers and it just gives you goals that you could achieve and start working towards. So uh, I just wanted to um, work through what I did with you guys. That way you could have um, an idea of, you know, my thought process behind what I want to do for my 2024 uh, land um, initiative, I guess you'd say. Um, if you guys have any um, data or information that could help me or people that I could get in touch with to uh, dive into the different vegetation, it's something I've been working on and trying to understand more of. I have a lot of uh, people that understand it more than I do too as well. So um, yeah, so that's what I've been up to. That's the 2024 uh, master plan, I guess you'd call it for the property. Um, I hope you like this video. Please like and subscribe. And if you have any tips or tricks uh, for me, please leave them in the comments. All right, we'll get back to you when we start making some progress on the ground.